He's a sweet soul. Ah, oh, yeah. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. This is Midlife Madness, the show where we get the woman and man's perspective on particular topics that go on in life. Um, I'm Troy Hill. We also have Lisa with us today. How are you doing, Lisa? I'm doing great. Thank you. We're doing great. That's good to hear. And we got Darius Lewis. How are you doing today, sir? I'm going to let you guys say that for me. You're He's blessed. 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 <laughs> and we also have Billy Wade. How are you doing this week? I am wonderful. Thank you. Okay. And uh, today's topic is going to be put on the table by Lisa Lee. What do you have today, Lisa Lee? Well, today I would like to know from my co-host if you were in such financial um, a financial position where you felt like you know a relation and a relationship was moving to a marriage top level, would you be willing to ask your significant other for a prenup? And then the other side of that would be if you were asked to sign a prenup, would you sign one? A very, very interesting question indeed. Um, okay, what's the monetary status we talking? Are we talking limousine riding, you know, you know, I mean, going around screaming? It just has to be one lines. where you feel like you need to protect your assets. So, I mean, I don't think there's a, there's not a threshold on that. It's just okay. if you felt like you needed, you know, let's say you were with someone who, I don't know, it's just, it would just be one where you felt like you, you know, maybe needed to secure it, it, Let's say it, it didn't have to be monetary. It could be like you own a bunch of properties. They don't really have a tangible cash value, but they would, you know, if they were sold and you had to, you know, whatever, like, you know, I don't think there's a threshold. It's just that. Okay. Okay. So I'm, I'm going to just, I'm going to paint it in my head. Like I'm like living the life of a 1980s Ric Flair running around town, just doing whatever Ooh. I feel like that's all I'm going to do. Um, but I'm not going to answer the question first. <laughs> so I'm going to kick it over to Billy. What would you do? Okay. Well, um, I would, if I was in such a position where I had property, I owned a lot of property or had a lot of money, I would definitely ask for a prenup. I would. This day and age, you never know. People have ulterior motives and they hide them well. And you find out when it's too late. So yes, I would ask for a prenup. And I would expect, knowing that I would ask for one, I would expect if the shoe was on the other foot, that I would be asked for one. To sign okay. one, I'm sorry. Okay, so, so, so you're saying that you're, you're mature about the thing and you're gonna have the same understanding as someone asked you, basically. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, so, so it'd be like, no, like, oh, my, me? it will be nothing like that. <laughs> No, 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 not at all. I would expect, because I would do it. So I would expect someone to ask me to sign a prenup as well. Okay, all right, that's fair enough, fair enough. I think that's a good answer. Um, what about you, Darius? I, I totally agree with what Billy said. I would do the same thing. Um, you know, like she said, it, there's people out here with ulterior motives and you just don't know, man. I mean, they could be trying like they're completely all for you until you know you actually sign and you get married and then all of a sudden oh I got half your stuff you know mm -hmm. so I, I would definitely ask for it and I would expect to be asked in return it wouldn't bother me at all okay I'm yeah. kind of I'm kind of on the same boat with both of you you know and I don't know if it's because it might be because I the where I live the city, the, you know, the, the area I live, it might make me lean towards that more so than maybe if I lived someplace else, because I do think this, the town I, I, mean, I live out in the DFW area, I do think it's a, a little bit different, you know, you know, uh, for some, or I mean, my perception system may be a little bit different, um, because there is people, it's like all about money here in this area in some cases, which is kind of sad. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, I can definitely understand where you guys are coming from, but I think it's just more so according to where I'm currently living right now. I mean, if I live someplace else, maybe it would be a little bit different. I don't know. Um, what about you, Lisa? I have a follow-up question for you, please. Sure. Mm -hmm. So 
what would a different location have to do with your, if the asset valuation or whatever was the same, whether you lived here or whether you lived in um, Bangor, Maine, let's say, um, <laughs> what would that have to do with, like explain to me why the different location would, would make you, maybe make your decision different. I'm saying if, um, and now I might be wrong, but if it's where I grew up from, my perception might be a little bit different than where it is from here. That's all, I mean, that's all I'm saying. You know, it's talking about big city, little city. That's two different things. Sometimes, you know, the thought process of more people in a smaller city, a smaller community may be different than a big, like major city, you know, out of the country. So, I mean, that's the reason why I'm saying my lo the location itself might make me change my mind a little bit. Um, it so might be a little bit different, style? I don't know. Hmm? So meaning like, like lifestyle? Yeah. Like it's faster? Like, it's, you know, is that what you're saying? Yeah, As opposed lifestyle. To lifestyle, it might be a little bit, it might be a little bit slower in some respects and stuff. No, I mean like slower in like a bad type of way. I just mean just right. more, just more kind of. Like that. Know, like more on that mom and pops type of vibe type mm -hmm. of thing, you know? I don't know, I might be wrong. I mean, but. Less gold know, diggers? Mm -hmm. What's that? Less gold diggers. It could potentially exactly. be. I don't. I mean, it could potentially be. I don't know. I mean, it's just my perception of what the town I grew up in and where I currently live now is just completely two different things. Sure. Yeah. I get that. You know. I mean, I'm sure, like in your town, because you grew up in a small town, also isn't. I mean, don't you think it would be a little bit different? You know, when you think about location, or do you think it would still be the same? Um, my opinion would not change no matter where I lived, just because. Okay. An asset is an asset. To me, in my opinion, an asset yeah. is an asset is an asset, whether I live here or in my little two-stop light town. I mean, I feel mm -hmm. like, um, it, but I mean, I get what you're saying because mm -hmm. people are, you know, in my hometown, it's, I mean, there are people that are that way for sure, but you're pull, you're, you would be pulling from a lot smaller pool. So therefore you're probably going to know their parents, their grandparents, their aunts and uncles, you know, you're going to know kind of what kind of family they come from. So you may be mm -hmm. a little, I get what you're saying about being it, more it trusting. May, this, yeah, it may, you know right. yeah, yeah. It may, you may be more privy to, you know, information as far as the dirt on that particular individual. You know, not saying it might be dirt, but maybe, I don't know, maybe being a smaller town, you might have a, you know, a bigger, a more higher level of information about that person versus being completely like, like blindsided like later. I don't know. Um, what do you think about that, Darius? Um, I, I don't really think it would change all that much. I think if a person's thirsty, they're going to come after you regardless. <laughs> you know, if you got money and, and that's what they want, you know, they're going to come after you. It doesn't matter what type of city, what size of city. Um, mm -hmm. You know, what if you have more activities in that city compared to another and stuff like that? Because I've seen mm -hmm. it in both situations with people I know. Um, yeah, it, I don't think it would really change that much at all. Okay, well, I mean, fair. Um, <laughs> oh, you got something? Oh, go yeah, ahead, Lisa. So let me ask you this. So, like, if you were heading towards marriage with someone, and so obviously you loved them, and you asked them to sign a prenup and they refused, Ooh. is it over? Ooh. Wow. That's deep. In, in, in terms of you, you know, in terms of your, you know, the way you're saying it, asset is an asset is an asset. I mean, that is kind of a deal breaker, isn't it? If that's your, if that's your state of mind, but still, sure. if you're asking somebody, if you worked your whole life and made like a whole bunch of money and you kind of offered that paper out to say, would you sign it? The thought process, you would think the thought process of the other party would not look at it like it's some type of erroneous type of. Uh, slap in the face type of thing and they would look at it that aspect is kind of like you know we in it we you know i had this you had this when we got married and stuff and this is what you, you came here with a, a ten dollar ten dollar satchel or whatever you're gonna leave for a ten dollar satchel i don't know <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I mean am i wrong with that i mean because i understand no. once you get married yes you acquire and you build together but still you, i mean there's a dude what uh, sugar shane mosley um, big time fighter for several years and stuff. And he recently got divorced and, you know, out of the divorce, his, his ex-wife got like three of his world championship belts. 
I didn't see her in the ring. How's that even possible? So I think, I think that there's reason. There's a reason to the whole thing. If people have rational reasoning, reasoning, you probably wouldn't have to even think about a prenuptial agreement in any type of thing. You know, it's kind of like you would think. Okay, well, you had this, I had this, we built this, and let's break it down after that. You know, it's kind of not like. You know, I married a millionaire, so all of a sudden, you know, now I'm a, now I'm supposed to get a million too if things don't work out. I don't think that's fair. But then again, I'm rational, <laughs> you know. But I mean, am I wrong? I mean, what what do you think, Billy? I think that if somebody refuses to sign, I mean, if we get to the point of marriage and someone refuses to sign, you got to reevaluate what their motives are. I mean, if they're refusing to sign, something isn't right in the first place. Yeah. If, if there was love involved, I would say, uh, forget it. Just don't get married. Just stay the way you're doing it. I mean, marriage to me is overrated anyways, and that's another topic on a different show. But I think you can just stay together, you know? I mean, if, if the feelings are there, but you definitely have to look at why. I mean, th th to me, I would not trust that person anymore. If they refuse to sign, in the back of my head, there's always going to be, why did you refuse to sign this? What is really going on? What is your motive? What are your motives here? Yeah. And by the so way, Sugar Shane Mosley is cute, and I would have married him. <laughs> and he could have kept his belt. <laughs> P.S. You heard it here, people. <laughs> Everybody's writing notes. He is very, very interactive. <laughs> some people are writing notes. Some people are removing themselves off the list. Um, <laughs> uh, but, I mean, you would have to look at why would they not sign? I would not trust. There would be a yeah, trust no, issue you, that develops from that. No, that's me. an excellent point. I mean, to me, that is an excellent point, you know, because the subconscious, that could be, that's a... That could be a pain, Jack. I hate using 70s, uh, 70s terminology, but once some stuff starts creeping up in your head like that, that's going to mess with you for the rest of that relationship. So exactly, it kind of kind of like is the end at that point, you would think. I mean, what, exactly. what, do, you think, Darius? what do you think, Darius? Yeah, I, I totally agree. That would be a red flag right away mm -hmm. and stuff. I mean, if you're in love with this person and they're supposedly in love with you and you just ask them to sign a prenup, and they say no, that that has to be a trigger. You just, you have to think about that because going into it, you should just be basing it off of, you know, I want to be with this person, that person wants to be with me, regardless of, you know, piece of paper, kind of like what Billy was saying, you know, like you don't overrate it and stuff. And it's like a prenup, like seriously, think about it. Like if you're going to be with this person, why is that such a big deal? Why, why can't you sign it? Yeah, exactly. They, yeah, I mean, like, if they disagreed, you know, I, yeah, that's definitely a red flag for me. I would be like, nah, you know, I got to reevaluate the situation. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, what what's your thoughts, Lisa? You know, if well, I mean, that scenario was, you know, was happening to you, you know, and yeah. you offered gentlemen to pay, you know, or sign freeing up, and all of a sudden he's like, I ain't gonna be able to do. I mean, how does that change <laughs> for you? Well, I would like to think that I would have been almost evaluating the situation enough to know the answer before I asked it. And if I had done my due diligence, I feel like if I get to the point of asking, I know what the answer is going to be. I mean, there's always the chance but, that, but with know. the curve, with the curve, because it's kind of like a curveball question, right? It's, but so, I mean, you can, you can expect a curveball, a curveball answer to come right back. Because I can sure. talk, I mean, because I mean, I'm not saying that. I mean, I get the reason why someone would do it, but I mean, it's just, man, I don't know your people when they, I don't know the success rate of how that scenario plays out all the time because that could put somebody off, you know, because from the other person's point of view, it's like, you want me to sign this because you don't trust me? Am I right. right? I mean, so it could kind of play both ways, you know? Yeah. I mean, and it both and it both deals and it both deals with trust. Well, and but I don't even think it's. I could see it from a standpoint of, you know, I hear it a lot of times. You know, because I mean, let's let's be honest. It's mostly not. I mean, not. I don't know the statistics, and I'm not going to research it. But it's most of the time it's men asking women for a prenup. Okay. Well, 
And then the woman, a lot of times their defense mechanism is you're, you're going into this with an anticipation that it will fail and they get their emotions all involved or whatever. Um, mm. So, you know, that's always a lot of times thrown back like, oh, you're, yeah. you don't even think we're going to make it and this and that. I mean, that could come from a guy or a girl either way. So, um, you know, I don't, you know, the curveball, if I didn't, if I thought I knew the answer and, the, and I got a curveball answer and said, no, I'm not going to sign it. It is a deal breaker for me because I, it, you know, I couldn't stay in the relationship even, you know, as a non-married couple because we were heading down that path and that is obviously what I wanted. And then I'm not just going to, because like you said, I, I, I'm always going to be in the back of my head. Okay. If I'm chartering this plane to go, you know, if we're doing all this stuff, what's the motive behind it, you know? And so there would always be something there. And I, I don't think I could stay in the relationship at that point. No, I, I yeah. totally get that. Man, I totally get that. Totally understand. Um, let's, let's talk about uh, something else uh, here because it is, it is the holiday season. And, um, and throughout the holiday season, this time of year, you know, there's going to be some people who might be, you know, spending with family and friends, you know, always a good time. But there's also those times and maybe pieces of your life where sometimes you're not uh, having that holiday experience um, um, with family, you know, or friends or whatever the case may be. You might be going through a breakup or something during the holidays. Um, have you guys ever experienced any of that before? A, a breakup Nobody. during the holidays? Yeah, or just being just being by yourself or like a different situation, especially like even with COVID right now. You know, because a lot of people are maybe not going to go travel and stuff to see their family and friends and stuff. So, I mean, yeah, I have. I mean, um, I mean, I have. I mean, I dealt with my my divorce or whatever. That was during. That's, I got served during like a couple of weeks before Christmas, and then like that whole two mm. week span, my whole like basically like life completely like shifted. You know, from you know, I have a family. You know, I'm going to be celebrating the holidays with my family. So all of a sudden. I'm not at a, having a, a Christmas celebration with my family and I'm not having a Christmas dinner and, and my assets have been changed and flip flopped around. So I don't have access to my money. So then my, you know, my Christmas dinner turns into basically Jack in the box and stuff, <laughs> you know? So I've had, I've had holidays like that before and it sucks, you know? And, you know, I look back at it now and it's like, yeah, I'm just like way stronger than what I, you know, what I was then, but still, you know, I have to sit up there and think that other people have went through things like that before, where they're just kind of like their whole life is like upended during the holiday, where they have like, spe I mean, just think about it. I mean, breakups, divorce, you know, um, um, um. I've dealt that... with loss during okay, the holidays. Look. Like, uh, it was, it wasn't a, it wasn't a, um, uh, a spouse or anything like that it wasn't a breakup but it was a loss of my daughter-in-law and that happened like right before the holidays and mm -hmm. that was very very hard very hard a lot of tears and it was just very lonely and you just it's something you don't want to go through you don't want to wish that on anybody you know I mean the holidays mm -hmm. to me are like the worst time for things like that yeah and I think it's especially yeah. cruel for somebody else to do that to somebody right during or before the holidays. I think that's especially cool. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, once it gets to a certain part in a, a end of a bad relationship, people are going to make bad. They're just, they're just basically just, they don't care when it is, you know, they just really don't what time it is, you know, anything, you know, yeah. what situation you may be going through. None of that stuff is even significant anymore. And once they get to that point, yeah. there's no, there's no turning back, you know, there's no, there's no turning back at all. Um, but see, that was another, right. that's another good thing that or good point that you brought up, Billy, is about, uh, you know, people dealing with um, loss, you know, death and, and, you know, things like that during the holidays as well, that can just alter your holiday. I mean, it, I mean, it might be, I mean, it might get better as, you know, the holidays go on as years go on, but still it's like mm -hmm. those little key things during the holiday can just mess up a person, you know, um, what's your thoughts Absolutely. on that? What's your thoughts on that, Darius? Oh, I didn't, I didn't hear you. Okay. <laughs> um, no, I mean, I, I've dealt with that somewhat, you know, um, stuff leading up to the holidays, stuff like that, where you've been 
you've broken up and you've been apart and you're just completely by yourself and stuff like that. I mean, shit, I dealt with it last year, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. um, through a hell of a time and stuff. And especially not losing, you know, like my grandmother, my mother, my father, you know, like all these people mm-hmm. that I in that time too. So yeah, it was extremely rough, you know. Um, I had to just got stronger, you know, from dealing with it, but I relied a lot on my friends, um, mm-hmm. you know, my family, my, my children, they, they helped pull me through, you know, every day it was, it was a struggle and stuff like that. And like you said, I mean, you do get to a point where even like this year, you start thinking about stuff that happened, mm-hmm. or, you know, or like, it's not the same, you don't have, you know, that, that same atmosphere and stuff like that. But you have to, you have to just appreciate the things that you do have and try to move forward and, and just uh, think of things that can cheer you up. Exactly. Mm-hmm. No, you're, no, you're, you're right. Because, I mean, even even last Christmas for me, I mean, Lisa and Darius, you guys both know, you know, that it wasn't it wasn't great. But I've grown up past that time. And, I, and to be quite frank, I could give two, two flying Fs about last Christmas because I'm in a good place. So I just don't care. But, <laughs> you know... <laughs> <laughs> but no, I mean, it, I, I mean, I think the reason why <laughs> I think the reason why I'm I'm sharing this is because it's one of those things again that you know, like I mean, the premise of us is that we're all at this like particular age, and we're sharing like these small fragments about our life, just so you know, you guys will know, uh, our lovely, wonderful viewers, that you're not alone in these situations, you know, and and everybody mm-hmm. has been through something that. You know, and we don't we don't quantify or equate what's bad. I mean, because you know, we might talk about some things. Some of you guys might think, "Oh, it's not that bad at all," huh? You know, but <laughs> but you might have something that I might think is like completely ridiculous. But we're not going to devalue what hurt you or what changed you or what changed your thought process because that's not the way we operate here. We talk about empathy on this show and understanding one another. So we don't never devalue what someone else has been through that might be horrendous to them. You know, but. I mean, that's, I mean, that's really kind of the point of this, just the sharing and the open forum saying that all of us <laughs> through some shape or form is um, went through something. And at that time, um, when you're alone and you're like in that dark space and you don't think anybody cares, that's the reason why I share these things and Lisa shares things and Billy shares things and Darius shares things because I want you guys to know how important it is for us to, for us to realize that you're never alone and there's people, there's people, you know, they'll listen to what your problems are. So if you guys like our channel, please subscribe. And if you guys um, want to click the notification bell, bell for updated information, when we do have a new episode, we really appreciate that. And if you guys do have something that you would like to talk about, go ahead and share it with us. We would love to hear what you guys have and what your thoughts are. And we would definitely like to talk about it on our program. But um, what about, what about, what about you, Lisa, just in general, with this whole format of what we do with this show? Yeah, like, you know, we've, and, and you know, it's the one thing I, I want to say too to everybody, and like he said, you know, we're not going to devalue anything that anyone has ever been through. But at the same time, like I will use myself as an example. I haven't been through, you know, the things the traumatic things, you know, that, that some of my co-hosts have, but it doesn't mean the things that I have been through are any less important or any less. So, so even if you're sitting there and you're listening and you're like, wow, I haven't been through that. I don't, you know, I don't want to chime in because like nothing like, you know, because, you know, I lost my dad. It was what, um, it was 20 years ago. And so 20 years ago is a long time. But the holidays that, you know, even though 20 years has passed, there is still a tug and there is still a thing that's missing every Mm -hmm. single holiday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Mm -hmm. it's not like as if it just happened. You know, I lost an uncle just a couple of weeks ago. And Mm -hmm. I know that, you know, my cousins are really, it's fresh and it's hard. And it's, you know, the first one's hard. The second one's hard. I'm 20 in. It's still, there's, it's not as hard as it was the first year, but like, don't ever feel like, you know, and find you a group of friends, for, even if it's one person, I'm going to, 
I'm about to embarrass Troy and it's going to be really funny, but <laughs> he was really going through it. Like when he says he was going through it last holiday on a scale of one to 10, he was going through it at about a 47. So, you know, our group of friends here, um, we forced him to wear chicken socks. And <laughs> to try to lighten the mood, and they still got the socks. The socks go all the pictures, way up to your knees. Are there pictures of these chicken socks. Yes, I do have oh, them, oh and I will share them in the group text. Um, oh my god! But they, yeah, there they are, right there. <laughs> and they they don't really look that funny when they're not on your feet, but when they go <laughs> all the way up your knees, it looks like you have chicken legs. Oh. <laughs> I mean. Oh and my so God. That seems so insignificant, but like, I think Troy will admit, like, once he got, because we were all over here and we were like, here's you some chicken socks. And he was like, <laughs> but once you put them on, like, he started laughing and he was looking at us and we, you know, he was laughing at us. And in that second, it just kind of lightened the mood enough to where, mm -hmm. even if it was just for 10 minutes, he wasn't mm -hmm. thinking about, and, and so find you a group of people and if it's us and, but we're not all in the same place and you want to, you know, hop on here or message me or message them or whatever, just for that moment of levity, wait, levity, is that the right word? Brevity, levity. Sounds good. Yeah. If you want to laugh levity, for no. a couple minutes, no. like find mm -hmm. you someone that can help you um, just distract you even for just a few minutes because as minor as you feel like it is, or even as major as you feel like it is, it, there's someone out there and there is someone in this group, this platform that has been through it. And we talked about it last week, but like, I wanted to use the chicken sock example because it, it, it that, you know, we had a ball with it and we yeah. laughed and, and, you know, I, I, I don't know, Troy, I'm thinking maybe I'm, I think for at least a few minutes, you felt lighter than you did. No, I did. You know, I mean, came in. I know we were, we started laughing. We, you know, we started doing a karaoke and started singing and all that type of stuff. And it was a very, very good evening, you know? So it's like, I mean, it's, it's like one of those little, well, I guess it's like sort of like an icebreaker type of thing, sort of. Cause you know, I mean, I mean, I mean, it's just, there's like different versions of me, <laughs> but this version, the current, that version of me needed that for me to be, be good you. at least for yeah. the evening you know so you know it's just like those little things you know and like i said i mean lisa she was there for me darius was there for me and i think you know we kind of been like full circle like going back and forth between you know issues and things that we've been going through so you know it's it's i mean i'm thankful for you guys because otherwise i mean especially with this covid and all this nonsense that's been going on um god it really would have just sucked without you guys I mean, and, and uh -huh. YouTube and, and stuff. Oh. <laughs> <You know. laughs> but, but, Me too. <laughs> That's but, sweet. That's so special. It's so important to have people you can lean on and just for support and just to even just listen, just to let you get, get that out of you, just the emotions out of you and talk through it, just to listen. That is so important. And by any means, if there is anyone out there, just messenger me. I will, I will instantly respond, or if not instantly, in a few minutes, respond, and we can talk, or you can just vent and just get stuff out of there. It's it's not a problem. I please, if you need to talk, I am available anytime, and I stay up to like three or four in the morning. So yeah, she's, she's <laughs> always <my> out driving. <laughs> I'm always <laughs> out driving, right? <laughs> <So I'll pop laughs> <test it. laughs> exactly. <laughs> But, but yes, that's, a, that's, that's important. Some, that's some really, really good stuff. But uh, we're, we're kind of out of time right now. So uh, does anybody have some final words to uh, the listeners, um, the viewers for the holidays? you have anything to say, Darius? I just want to tell everybody to have a safe and happy holidays. Um, you know, piggyback off what you guys have said. You know, don't ever think you're alone. I mean, you got all of us that's here, you got other people you can reach out to, even a lot of companies, they have counseling that they offer and stuff like that. So take advantage of, of anything that you can. 
Mm -hmm. I'll be the first to admit, like I told you guys before, with bottling stuff up, like it, it took a lot for me to open up and like express myself and what was going on in my life to people. And it's one of the best things that ever happened. So just everybody be safe. Much love to you and happy holidays. Yeah, and I just want to bounce back on what Darius said. I mean, there is like a lot of jobs do provide excellent programs. I mean, I mean, I've, I've been through them myself and I think they were helpful. You know, a lot of them will offer you like like your first four sessions free for some companies. Um, so if you do if your job, I mean, if your your job does provide such service and you feel like you're just in that, you're just stuck in that space and you don't have anybody to talk to or you don't feel comfortable talking to people that, that know you, you know, it might be easier to talk to you to, to maybe a, a, a professional or or a life coach or whatever you think it is, but I mean, by all means, take advantage of it. So, I mean, there's nothing, isn't it, I mean, you shouldn't feel bad about it if you, if you take that route. There's nothing wrong with it, you know. Um, what, what do you have, Lisa? Yeah, so I'm going to piggyback off of your piggyback and say that <laughs> <laughs> because a lot of people don't, a lot of people don't know what to ask for. So typically those programs in your company, it's called the Employee Assistant Program, or they will abbreviate it as an EAP. So if you go to your HR function and you ask them, do we offer most of them? It's, it's part of a healthcare plan. It's not a separate thing you have to pay for. It's just kind of um, it's kind of a blanket coverage that comes in with your healthcare usually. Um, so just ask um, for the EAP. There's usually an 800 number and then you can get it started that way. So I just wanted to kind of give that kind of what it's called because people, some people don't even know what to ask for. But on that note also, um, just pay attention to the people around you. Um, we've talked about it before. This, you know, this time of year is not always, you know, roses and sunshine for everybody. Just be aware of the people around you and, um, you know, obviously reach out to us, you know, if you feel like you want to talk or whatever, but also just pay attention to then if you need to say, hey, do you need someone to talk to? You know, I'm a little bit invasive with these, my friends here. And I'm like, are you okay? Are you okay? Are you okay? Is everything okay? Okay. You know, cause I'm, I'm over the top like that. I'm that way with my mom, my sister, pretty much everybody, you know, in my life. So just pay attention to the people around you and, and make sure, you know, you might notice somebody going through something that may, they may be withdrawing or whatever, but also um, just enjoy whatever it is that you have going on. Find one thing. If, if this is a hard time for you, try to find one bit of thing, one, one little thing um, to smile about. And um, you know, we, we care about you. You matter. Um, you're important to this world and um, I wish mm -hmm. everybody all the safety, love, happiness in these holidays that this world has to offer and um, just Merry Christmas. That's yeah. it. Very, very good stuff, Lisa Lee. And what do you have to say to the people, Billy? Um, happy holidays. Um, what I want, and I'm going to piggyback off the piggyback that Lisa piggybacked off of you. <laughs> reach out to somebody. It's so important. Depression, keeping stuff in leads, it's, it's, it's like a snowball. It's going to start out little. And if you keep holding it in, whatever you're going through, anything, it's going to snowball and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Let it out in the beginning so you don't have to worry about all of that. But most importantly, love your family, love your friends. You know, it's, it, the year of 2020 has been trying for everybody. Everybody has gone through something this year. This year has showed us our strengths, our weaknesses, our vulnerabilities. It showed us all of that. We've seen all of that. And just love your family, love your friends, enjoy each other. I mean, you never know. So, and I also say, take a lot of pictures. That I posted something today about taking, it's so important because you don't know, you don't know. And those pictures are memories and memories are priceless, you know? So take pictures, give hugs, just enjoy each other. Say, I love you. Very, very good stuff. <laughs> I'm going to piggyback off what Lisa, then Billy, then Darius also said. I <laughs> um, want to wish everybody a happy holiday. And I want to add one thing on what Billy said, you know, love, love your friends, love your family, but you also got to remember to love yourself. 
Because sometimes, I, I mean, and no matter what the situation may be, that particular moment in time, it might just be you and only you. You know, exactly. you, got, you got a choice between going dark and light. You know, so you got to love yourself. You got to do the positive affirmation thing. Start replacing those positive uh, thoughts into your brain and get rid of that negative stuff. But that's really all I have. But I just want to wish you guys happy holidays. And I'm going to see you guys next time. And I'm going to go watch America's number one Christmas movie, Die Hard. So I bid that's, you guys all. No, not a you, Christmas movie. You, and adieu. <laughs> <laughs> happy holidays, people. <laughs>